Welcome to day four. Welcome to day four. Uh, we have a very packed day today, uh, so we got to start on schedule. Uh, first up, we have Jack with Augur. And uh, I'll let you take it away. Thank you. So um, uh, this is a short talk, so I'll go ahead and just jump into it. I was going to give a uh, you know basic how prediction markets work introduction, and I thought we put together this really nice video in the lead up to our crowd sale. So I'll just show you the video, and we'll have time for some actual technical stuff. Augur is a prediction market platform that rewards a user for correctly predicting future events. Prediction markets allow users to purchase and sell shares in the outcome of an event. The current market price of a share is an estimate of the probability of an event actually occurring. The prices of each share adds up to one dollar, so if you buy a share at even odds, it will cost you 50 cents. If you end up being right, you'll receive a dollar for that share. These markets rely on a scientific principle known as the wisdom of the crowd, which states that if you ask, it's usually far more accurate than any expert. This allows us to create one of the most powerful forecasting tools. The problem with previous prediction markets is that they were centralized, allowing them to be easily shut down. Another problem is that with any prediction market, someone has to report what actually happened after the event occurred. In centralized markets, one person does this, which means there can be mistakes or outright manipulation. With Augur, we'll have thousands of users reporting on these outcomes using something called reputation. Using Augur, anyone, anywhere in the world can create a market asking a question about anything. Market makers provide some initial funding for the market and in return receive some trading fees. Anybody can freely buy and sell shares in the outcome of that market. And the current share prices provide the best estimate of that event occurring. Imagine being able to Google questions about things that haven't happened yet and receiving accurate odds of their occurrence. That power, the power to glimpse into the future, is what we believe everyone should have access to. Okay, so that's the sort of a high-level overview of just what, what are we making? We're making a prediction market platform. Now, so we've learned a lot of sort of uh, low-level stuff about um, Ethereum and how you make decentralized applications over the past few days. And so you might be wondering, how the heck do you make something like that on Ethereum, just using smart contracts? And I know this is a fairly technical audience, so um, rather than going through my usual sort of high-level auger spiel, I thought I'd actually go through the details. Okay, so <clears throat> excuse me. So this is the Augur interface. Now, the first thing I want you to notice is that uh, all you have to do is go to a website. So you go to client.augur.net, and the way this works is we want this to be as much like just using a regular website as possible, even though it's decentralized on the back end. So you don't have to uh, be running uh, a local Ethereum node, although you can, and if you are, it will talk to it. Um, but if you aren't, it talks to uh, one of our hosted nodes. So all you have to do is go to client.augur.net, and um, you'll, you'll be presented with our interface. So. Uh, there's three trending markets you can see here in the middle. And um, <clears throat> so one, one thing we'll notice is that uh, there's one market that says, will the sun turn into a red giant and engulf the earth by the end of 2015? And it's, it's at 18%. So now that seems maybe, that seems maybe a little high, right? Because I mean, the sun is probably not going to turn into a red giant and engulf the earth by the end of 2015. So we could probably make some money off that because the, this says that the, man, the market price, there's an 18% chance of that happening. So, so we, we need to create an account to do that. Now, you, so you can use your existing Ethereum accounts. You can use this using a local node, uh, in which case it'll just automatically connect to your account. 
uh, by talking to uh, by talking to the node by talking to Geth. Um, or you can create an account using our system. And um, so you, you'll notice in the top right hand corner we have sign in and register buttons. So again, looks very much like a regular website. So after you click on register, well, I'm going to walk. I'm going to walk you through the steps of what happens after you click on it. So you click on register and uh, type in your username and, and password. And so I've got the two inputs. There, you'll see why they're like that. <coughs> and um, so we made we made a, a tool called which we call Keytherium. We're fairly proud of that name. Um, and it's basically just a key manage. It's a, a standalone JavaScript key management tool for um, Ethereum. And what it does is it is a, it's, it's JavaScript code that creates the, um, the same key store files that uh, Geth natively uses. So what happens is it generates a, uh, a private key, which is just a random 256-bit number. Uh, it also generates a random salt initialization, initialization vector. Um, puts those through, uh, it puts the password and the salt through, um, I think we're using 10,000 rounds of S-Crypt uh, to generate an encryption key. And um, this, uh, so, th so this is a symmetric encryption key and it's used to, um, it's used to encrypt the plain text private key. So this is, this is your new account's private key. Um, and, we do, and we do the encryption using um, AES-128, which is a, just a strong symmetric cipher. And um, so one, one interesting thing here is that th this is, uh, by design, the exact same process that, um, that Geth uses, right? And um, that means that this encrypted private key and the, the, the JSON file that can be exported from this can just be used natively uh, in Geth. And uh, so, you, so you actually can, can export this and just uh, copy it into your key store directory and you can just, you can use it. You can, you'll even use the same password because it, uh, Geth knows how to read the, um, the encryption parameters right out of this file. Um, now, what happens with this uh, encrypted JSON file is um, we store it in IPFS and this, so this file is uh, assigned a hash by IPFS according to the, the data in the file. And because we want to associate this data with a username, which is just sort of an arbitrary string rather than the IPFS hash, which is you know, sort of a hard to remember 256-bit number, um, what we do is we have, well, we have an Ethereum contract that is just, uh, it maps the username that the user typed in uh, onto the IPFS hash. And they're, they're waving the five minute sign at me, so I need to move faster. Um, and so one thing I want to comment about this is that uh, because the, when you look up the hash, it is uh, broadcast to the DHT and IPFS, this is not as secure as it could be. Um, and I, I'm talking to uh, Juan, the IPFS guy, about this. And we are, because of this, we're going to also have an option of just storing it in local storage. Okay, and so, the, um, the converse of this is when you log in, you supply a username and password, this is sort of the reverse of this magic happens. You have the decrypted private key, which you can use to sign transactions in the browser um, using the Ethereum JS uh, TX library. Um, and so we, re so we registered for an account. And because right now we're on just a, our, the Augur private chain while we test, uh, we give all new accounts just 100 free ether because it's not real ether. So uh, I got my 100 free ether, and um, you can uh, use the faucets to get cash and reputation. So you actually place bets in the prediction markets using using cash. And so now we're finally at the point where we can bet on this absurd event. And as the comment says, Yahoo. So. Um, yeah, so you can see we have like a, a, a price series and, and comments. Comments are still a little finicky right now. Um, and so we want, we want to bet on no, right? Because we think that, man, this is, this is really uh, underpriced given that we, we know this isn't going to happen. So I'm going to say we're going to buy 485 shares of no. This will bring the probability up to 
because we know this isn't going to happen, so this is all profit, and click buy. Now we have 485 shares pending. Uh, about 12 seconds later, it clears, and now we have that many shares. So you can see the price now has moved up to um, 100%. Okay, so what just happened here? Well, so one, I click the buy button, but what happens after that? So the, your buy order gets uh, serialized, bundled into a transaction, and on the Augur trading contract, there's a buy shares method. Um, now this, the transaction actually gets signed in the browser, right? So this, I said that you don't need to have a local geth node running. Uh, in fact, the, you can sign this just using JavaScript in the browser, and then you submit the signed raw transaction to the Ethereum node that way. And in that case, the Ethereum node does not ever need to see your private key. It just gets the encrypted, it gets the, um, the signed transaction. Um, then we send it to Geth. Geth broadcasts the transaction to the network. And then we just pull Geth to see when the transaction's been incorporated into a block. And this is what our architecture looks like. So we've got our very happy user. And this interface that I've been showing you is, so it's the sort of pinkish purple blob where it says Augur client. Um, and uh, because mo a lot of the nice tooling that, that has been talked about here basically didn't exist when we got started, we're, we're mostly just working with our own stack. So we have our own middleware, we, uh, and, um, and that's the way it talks to uh, Ethereum, which here would be on the user's computer. In the example I just showed you, it's actually running on our remote server, and that talks to the decentralized network. Um, so let me, let me walk you through, uh, if I have time, I have two minutes, let me walk you through exactly what happens when you, uh, when you buy shares. So, um, so th this, is, uh, this is sort of a simplified version of our market's data contract. So, there's, there's a, uh, so all of our contracts are written in Serpent, and um, we, I, all information about shares and bets that people have placed, they're stored as data on contracts, right? So the set of contracts is fixed, and uh, the, the trades that you make and who has made them and the events that are incorporated in markets, uh, these are just data on the contracts. It's stored as basically a, a big dictionary. And we have, a modify, uh, we have a modify shares method. So this method gets called, so, if Alice, so Alice buys two shares of outcome one in market M. So we invoke modify shares, and basically, this is what happens, right? So this is that data structure up top. And we can see, okay, now she has two shares of one. Um, now, I've described this sort of uh, somewhat complicated system. And it's, Augur is really, it's too big for one contract. Originally, we had it all in one contract. There are some nice things about that. Um, but basically, it's way too big to upload. So we actually have it split into uh, 26 contracts. And so, our contracts are, we have data contracts, which basically are, uh, they have things like this market data structure, and then they have setter and getter methods. And these can be imported into the function contracts, uh, which sort of make use of them. And the reason we have it set up like that is so that most of the functionality is in the functions and the function contracts, and because of that, uh, we can we can make changes without having to throw out all the data, which is, uh, even when we're testing, is really nice. Um, so I, I, want, I want to give you an example of uh, how multiple contracts work together just very quickly. Um, so this is, uh, in, in the little walkthrough I, I just gave you, saw me uh, use our, what are called our faucets. So this is, is your free cash and free reputation. So, these are methods on the faucets contract, which is it's one, it's one of the function contracts. And it has to import the cache and the reporting contracts to do this. Um, so the, now this, the syntax to do this in Serpent, and I actually don't know the syntax in Solidity, but the syntax in Serpent actually requires you to, uh, it's somewhat verbose, and it requires you to actually specify the address of cache. Now that's somewhat inconvenient because that will change if the cache contract changes. And um, that if you have you know, multiple dependencies, that can be a real pain. So uh, what we did is we have a dependency resolution script that takes care of this for us. So we can use this sort of Pythonic syntax, import cache as cache. And it inserts the externs uh, as needed. And um, 
and we can just use it that way. Okay, and I also just wanted to say all our code is open source. I know this was just sort of a whirlwind tour. Uh, it's all at uh, on our GitHub, so if you want to pitch in, please do. Um, yeah, that's it. Thank you, Jack. And I wanted to say special thanks to Augur as well for their sponsorship of DevCon, so if we give it up another round of applause for Augur.